So by reading the title of this video, I would assume you expected a rant, but this is more evolved into a criticism type of video, which is kind of new for me. So for the less knowledgeable fan or just somebody coming upon this video randomly years in the future, what happened? Circa October 6th, 2012, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Phantom Blood would release. After decades of not having an anime adaptation originally coming out with a manga in the 80s, JoJo's would finally get an anime adaptation, a proper one, I'm not counting the OVA. From that point onward, JoJo's would blow up in the West, never having a true footing or standing within the US, or just technically the West in this case, it would reach critical acclaim everywhere. Part 1 onward, the hype for the series and the community would grow exponentially to the point where memes, ideas, videos would be everywhere across the internet. At one point, I'm gonna be honest, in a personal experience, you could not escape it. It was in live streams, it was on YouTube videos, it was in random memes across anywhere I would go to on any platform. JoJo's at one point, I think during around part four, was everywhere. And I mean literally everywhere. I could not escape it. Now looking back on it, dear god did I take it for granted. It was so nice. Even though I never liked JoJo memes as I thought they were very poor, I did every once in a while laugh at the joke or, you know, the, the funny edit of Joseph or Josuke. It was, you know, all in good humor and just the community doing what the community does. By the end of part four, Diamond is Unbreakable, the hype around JoJo's, the memes on the internet, and just how everybody was just kind of really blushing over the fact of just this crazy ass anime that was really good and really funny, at least to some people, was just blowing up. There was levels of hype unseen across to everywhere. And then Golden Wind came out. <laughs> Now, what happens when you give new levels of hype to an already hype-ass anime adaptation that has been basically thrown everywhere on the internet? You basically get a golden era of a franchise, basically. I'm kind of really underselling that, but if you were there at the time, if you were not a new fan, Jesus, man, part five, and I, I'm meaning this very seriously, was literally everywhere. It was just crazy to see how the most little of things within this community, from simple faces and background characters were just being plastered everywhere to literal beats, I'm looking at Jorno's theme, were just everywhere and would collectively gain millions of views on YouTube alone. Oh, I'm just fangasming over it, but dude, like, I genuinely think I honestly took it for granted. Like, man, oh, and we're, we're about to get on the downfall part of it. And then what happens when you are going to get the ending to the original universe, you know, part six, it's the kind of finale or the conclusion to the main JoJo timeline. Well, it's probably gonna lead to some crazy ass hype, right? You know, oh damn, the story's gonna finally end. We're reaching the climax. It's gonna be this grand finale. And it was originally announced on August 8th, 2021 on a live stream. And I remember that day very vividly as where we saw Jolene and crew for the first time. And man, was I hyped. It would be revealed later on that it would be exclusively on Netflix for a while and be released in batches instead of weekly episodes. And it would basically devolve into uh, the series not being, uh, you know, Everywhere, the hype train for the series would just derail and crash and burn and then explode and then tumble a few more times and stop. Now, for the people that are going to somehow defend it, I don't know how or where you people come from, you're probably going to say that it's better for the animation studios and, you know, overall the Netflix deal is good for David Production. Uh, no, you actually do some very basic research. I think anybody could do this. You literally, I have on my second monitor, David Production Netflix, and the first few results are two things. One, uh, why David Production did it. It's money. It's, it's, it's about money. I, uh, and two, when it comes to animating stuff, uh, it actually doesn't benefit the company at all and only the ceo and the higher ups of david productions and not the animation staff so uh it's actually more stressful to uh animate things in this kind of monthly batch process than uh, doing it weekly and this decision only benefits people at the top and not the bottom yeah uh this is a very poor decision in hindsight and while talking about batch releases let's you know dispel the rumor that they're good or they should be used at all because let's be honest no it is very american and i'm specifically pointing out my country of origin here because it sucks batch releases or just binge watching in general is very american it happens with a lot of shows on Netflix and TV in general that Americans just, you know, watch a whole series in one go. But when it comes to the American anime fans and just anime fans in general, weekly series do phenomenally well. Why? Hype. 
Hype drives everything. Community drives everything. You get a community and make them hype over something, it will make a series double in size, double in just growth, and you have now a fandom to feed revenue into your, you know, animation, I guess, in this example. Now, of course, it does depend on the weekly anime, as some weekly anime do suck, but sometimes, and I guess almost universally, if the animation is good and the source material is very good, you get a banger on your hands. And of course, in this example would be JoJo's. Uh, another example, would be you know dragon ball i remember the dragon ball hype going crazy ultra instinct bro i couldn't wait for the next episode like a batch enemy couldn't couldn't do that for me no way and that's more like a personal feeling but i'm gonna be very honest with you the hype and levels of conscious thinking when it comes to a batch release and weekly is completely different because all i have to do when it comes to a batch release is just play next and you know my dopamine levels are just instantly fulfilled when it comes to a weekly release i have to wait and it just gets me more and more hype. And, you know, of course, with that happening, you get everything else in conjunction. Memes, community, growth in every regard. You know, I'm just saying it for the record here. Batches suck. And this is probably one of the biggest examples you could use in any argument for this kind of weekly versus batch debate. And that basically is how Netflix killed JoJo, as part six isn't, you know, around, sadly. Now, I know somebody is going to probably say in the comment section, but, you know, what if part six just sucked? You know, the, the manga sucked. Here's the thing. When it comes to anime adaptation, each JoJo part gets phenomenally better each time. They get better sound-wise, design-wise, animation-wise, even, you know, slightly manipulating the story and, you know, adding cool elements that David Brushton thinks, you know, might tweak it up and just make it slightly better, which they honestly overall do, and it's great. Thumbs up to them. And I would have to say, part six is probably one of the best animated, best voice acted, best, you know, slightly manipulating the story around, you know, putting in filler parts to, you know, make it more enjoyable ever. Part six is one of, if not the greatest, greatest part adaptation in all of JoJo's, hands down. I I'm not even joking about that. It's one of the greatest. And the fact that a very, very poor choice by Netflix or David Productions, as it's not, you know, officially known why they did batch releases, no party has e exactly said why, probably just to make money, has made this part lackluster and has basically kind of killed or, you know, beat a community down. And I'm one of those fans that like to spread the culture and hype for an anime that I enjoy. I am not a gatekeeper by any means i love getting my friends around the stuff i love it's just how i am and the fact that you know they're just gonna watch all through part six in one go and be like eh, it was pretty cool and not feel that weekly hype like the other parts had just fucking sucks dude it really really does i, I genuinely took that part five and all the other parts you know weekly hype for granted I really did. Now, I would leave it off on a dark note, but I am a optimist. I like to have hope. I do think of a better tomorrow. That's just how I personally am. Now, I want you to sit down as I explain this, and I, I kind of want to feed the hype into you and just kind of, you know, bring a little bit of light into your day if this kind of topic depresses you in a sense, you know, the JoJo hype is gone, but it can be relived. From how it looks, Part six is not doing the best, at least in terms of the other part. In and of itself, it is really good. But if for whatever reason, David Production realizes this fault and, you know, goes back to the previous formula with probably one of the most critically acclaimed parts, part seven, and redoes the format, it could be crazy levels of hype. Now, when I'm saying this, this is full ass hopium, but part seven has the memes. It has the community. A lot of people like part seven, and I mean a lot of people. It is almost universally told as being one of the best parts and just probably one of the best things in JoJo. Imagine, you know, you have a comeback story on top of the community getting hype over part seven and then part seven being an animation banger. We could possibly see levels of hype unseen before in this community and in terms of just the internet in general. I, I, I know I'm a bit of an optimist and I know I'm saying a lot here that possibly could not happen, but genuinely and honestly speaking about it, a part seven comeback or just a JoJo's comeback would be crazy. And I really hope that does happen. But if it doesn't, nah, I can't think like that. I, I want it to happen. I, I'm knocking on wood as I'm saying this. I want to see JoJo's back. I don't like Netflix and CEOs, but I hope. Like, comment, share, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one, ladies and gentlemen.